I'd like to talk to you now about uniformly accelerated motion. That's another important thing under kinematics. Now, uh, before doing this, I'm actually going to do something a little bit backwards. I'm actually going to say, well, although we're going to talk about uniformly accelerated motion, I'm actually going to talk to you about something that's not uniformly accelerated motion. Okay, so if there is no acceleration, so this is just going to be off to the side, just to sort of explain what it's not. Because most students who have taken a physics course before, at least, um, then they've looked at this and they've looked at, well, if there's no acceleration, this means this is easy. This just tells you that the velocity is just equal to the distance traveled over time. So just V is D over T. Or I suppose you could say it in uh, vector form. You can also say it's displacement over time. Remember, you can write displacement as an S. So this, if there's no acceleration, then it's easy. It's like what a lot of people have already learned about. So if there's no acceleration, here's what you do. Okay, no acceleration, here it is. So this could be, yeah, um, let's say you're just driving in your car at a constant speed. Well, then you're not accelerating, so that means your speed is just your distance traveled over time. Which means that what you can do then is you can just say, well, if you want to find out the time it takes, I mean, you can always just solve for time. I mean, hopefully you've seen this before. So you can actually say, well, this means that distance is velocity times the time. Well, you could say distance is the speed times the time. Or you could solve for time and say that's just the distance divided by the speed. I remember actually recently I've seen a YouTube video. There was a guy who was sort of making fun of his uh, friend who didn't really know how to solve for something like this. Just because I think he was asking something like, um, you know, how how if we drive a certain speed let's say it's in miles per hour uh you know then how long let's say i mean i'm going to change his example a little bit but let's say uh, it was like um oh i'm driving 60 miles per hour how long does it take to drive 60 miles and i think this this friend of his was just overthinking it of course because i don't think she thought much about this but if you're driving at 60 miles per hour then it takes one hour to go 60 miles so that should have been the answer. I think what she was doing is way overcomplicating things. If you think about it, if you're going 60 miles per hour, the amount of time it takes to go 60 miles, well, 60 miles over 60 miles per hour would just give you one hour. Right? 60 over 60 would be one. So at least this is an example of, well, no acceleration is as easy as anything. You just do velocity is displacement over time, or the speed is the distance traveled over time. That's how you deal with it. But what do we do when we have uniformly accelerated motion? Well, first of all, what do we mean by uniform? Uniformly accelerated motion, we're going to assume, this is the key thing here. Okay, so remember, this is the only exception. For everything else here now, we're assuming it is accelerating. We're going to assume that the acceleration is constant. This is the key thing here. A constant value. In other words, not changing. So we're going to assume that, let's say the acceleration is positive 1 meters per second, then it stays as positive 1 meters per second. Now we're going to assume some things here. So normally we assume that we have, um, let's see, well, we assume that we have no air resistance. So we're going to assume that we're in a vacuum, essentially, because air resistance makes a big difference here. We're going to assume there's no friction, even though real life situations have lots of friction. We're going to assume there's also no other losses. So this is an example of how we can deal with accelerated motion. And we're going to say uniformly. That just means constant. For something to be uniform, it means it's constant. When I spent some time in uh, the military, and I know that there, they make you wear a uniform. Why? So everyone else is sort of the same. So everyone looks constant. Uh, and some people obviously don't like that idea because why should I be the same? But I mean, hey, at boot camp, they cut everybody's hair short, make everybody wear the same things. And very quickly, it's, it's weird psychology, but you actually learn that, oh, I'm the same as everyone else. So you learn to work as a team. I think that was the whole point of the boot camp was to teach you that, you know, you can work as a team as long as, you know, you're not trying to be too different. So in this case right here, uniform was constant. Um, now, if we're assuming that there's no air resistance, no friction, and no other losses, then we can write this equation for acceleration. We've seen it before. The acceleration is just the change in velocity over change in time. This is really what this means. 
Remember, acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. This is what we use as far as the units go. But this is the equation for acceleration. Now remember though, this is the key thing I want to point out though, is that in order to have acceleration, you have to have your velocity change. So there's two ways for it to change. Now there's one way that most people think about, but it turns out there's an extra way. So your velocity must change. It can change in, now keep in mind, velocity is a vector. And a vector means it has two properties. It has a direction and a magnitude or a length. So in other words, I'm going to say uh, changes in length or in direction. So if your velocity changes in direction or it changes in length, either way, then you will have an acceleration. So let's look at the simplest way to do it. Let's look at just changing the length of this vector. Okay, so here what I'm going to do is uh, maybe I'll just give you an example here. So maybe we'll consider a little example. So let's say you're driving in your car at, uh, let's say, a speed of, or even a velocity of, let's say, I don't know, 0 0.5 meters per second. So you're driving super, super slow. Well, what do you do? Well, you step on the gas. I mean, this is an expression here, but you step on the gas. So what happens then when you step on the gas? Well, that means then that you cause the you cause your velocity vector to increase. Because I mean, you have a vector here, so your velocity vector to increase in magnitude, in other words, in length. So because you make your velocity vector get larger, that means you accelerate. Because remember, acceleration means Acceleration is a change in velocity over change in time. And you've changed the value of your velocity. Now, most people think that that's the only way to accelerate. But it turns out you can also change the direction of it. And it turns out uh, that is when you're going around in a circle. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But for right now, I'm trying to look at the simplest case. So this is why it is that you accelerate. So uh, maybe I'll get out to my trusty moving man. Uh, animation here again this is from PHET from University of Colorado and this is moving man so let's just say I consider my little dude here so this could be me in my car uh, now I said I should have my velocity as 0.5 and I'm going to make sure to show the vector so what I'm going to do is just show you what happens do you notice they've got like a little red arrow that's trying to be shown here. I mean, I could make it a little bit bigger if I wanted to. I could make it two. Look at the length of that vector, how it's bigger now all of a sudden. But what I want to show you then is this. If I start off again at zero and I make this 0 0.5, so this is me driving in my car at a constant speed. Now what I'm going to do, my situation before said I would step on the gas. So that means I'm going to increase my velocity vector. And that means I will accelerate. So in order to show this, what I'll do is I'll start off with uh, these situations and at some point I'm just going to make this just be a uh, one. So let's just assume I do that. Well now look what happens carefully. Look at the length of this vector, how it gets longer and longer and longer and longer as I go along. Now this may not have been very clear. Maybe I can press play back here and go back to the beginning. So let's look at what happened. Initially, I'm going at a constant constant speed here and that means I had some constant value if I zoom in here a little bit I had some constant value of velocity here it was constant steady value now of course I'm going further away so that's okay but look at this this had an acceleration of zero and at some point I guess it's right here I decided to change the acceleration to a positive value so watch very carefully the length of this arrow right as this right as I press play basically you're gonna see this arrow start to get bigger let's see so right around now Notice now the arrow is getting longer and longer and longer. So what I've done then, because this length of the vector is getting, well, it's different. Because I'm changing, that means I'm accelerating. So that's a really nice example of acceleration.